Who is Dave Brailsford? He could be a big part of Manchester United's new football operations under Jim Ratcliffe. So here is everything you need to know about Brailsford's career to date, both the positives and the negatives ahead of him maybe joining Manchester United's new football committee alongside Ratcliffe and apparently Joel Glazer. How are we doing everyone? Sammy United People's TV. This video is going to be a bit of an explainer for you. Who is Dave Brailsford? We're going to take a look at his successes, his career to date. What sort of job has he done at Ineos so far? What job has he done with Nice? What job would he do at Manchester United? And what concerns should we have? What problems have there been? I'm going to explain everything in this video for you. So please, if you can, drop a like on the video. I hope you enjoy it. Now, let's get into it. So who is Dave Brailsford? Dave Brailsford's big career success has come in cycling. He was the leading mind for the development and the subsequent success of Team GB and Team Sky in cycling. Brailsford first became famous following his success with Team GB at the Olympics. He managed to transform British cycling and created a major period of dominance. Team GB went from winning two golds at Athens in 2004 to eight golds at both Beijing 2008 and London 2012. And then he followed that with Team Sky which of course is road cycling. He went from the track to road cycling. And there was another period of dominance, this time with Team Sky. Between 2012 and 18, they won the Tour de France with Bradley Wiggins, Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas. And he was the team principal during that period. That's where he's had most of his success. Now, Brailsford is somebody who's sort of renowned for his focus on performance and process and, and sort of coaching the mindset to achieve success. That's what worked at Sky what worked with Team GB, and when Ineos bought Team Sky and they became Ineos Grenadiers in 2019, that's where the relationship between Ratcliffe and Brailsford began. So what does Dave Brailsford do with Ineos? Ineos bought Team Sky in 2019 and Brailsford was kept on as the team principal. I'll be honest, since then, it's hardly been the same period of success that it was with Team Sky. Ineos Grenadiers have never reached the heights that Team Sky did before. And Brailsford has been the team principal throughout that whole time. But the relationship between Ratcliffe and Brailsford continued. And in 2021, he became the director of sport for all of Ineos's ventures. They've got the Ineos Grenadiers. You've got the sailing team. You've got uh, the obviously principal partner of Mercedes AMG. You've got Nice. You've got Lausanne. They've got a lot of sporting ventures. And he is the director of all of those now. But we're now going to focus, of course, on Nice. What has Brailsford done with Nice that United fans can learn from? Brailsford was brought into Nice in the spring of 2022 to perform an audit. Basically, every single position, every person who worked there, who's doing their job properly, where are the problems? And back in May this year, I interviewed a French-based journalist, Luc Entwistle. And he spoke to me in a bit more detail about exactly what Brailsford was doing at Nice. Have a listen to this. As far as I know, I'm sure you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Dave Brailsford uh, and Jim Ratcliffe have obviously got their friendship through the Team Sky, which Ineos took over. And it's sort of like the cycling routes uh, where they became uh, friends. And Brailsford was brought in to Ineos, to Nice by Ineos, as you say, to do some and like a behind the scenes audit and something like these are the performance things that you need to improve to to get your team from x to x is um if Dave has his position changed dave browsford is he has he got more responsibility like what is his role inside is he is he still there at nice so this is uh something that it's, it's always hard to know exactly who's around and about at nice i mean he came in to do this audit he's involved with the nails and the nails are very intrinsically linked to uh, what is happening at Nice? Even they have they have cyclists, and they've they've got this kind of model, this this idea at Nice that you know you need to integrate uh, elements from other sport into the project in order to get uh, you know small competitive advantages over teammates. So you know you'll see you'll see you know high profile British cyclists just turn up at Nice's training centre from now and then. So I, I think it's it's sometimes hard to just distinguish exactly where the lines between Eneos and Nice are, are drawn. Um, he was very, very present there in the summer and earlier in the season. Um, Le Keeper even reporting that he had a mobile caravan that was actually situated at the club's training ground uh, for many weeks and months where he was basically living on site as he you know, carried out the sword and carried out all these changes behind the scenes. So he's, he's very involved in that. He was involved in bringing, for example, Ian Moody uh, in over the summer, which was an appointment that is now um, 
yeah, perceived quite negatively, shall we say, because he was responsible for that summer recruitment. Um, but yeah, Dave was was very, very involved, at least in, in the summer. Um, it feels as though maybe he's more over towards NES. I mean, his official role is still the NAS Director of Sport. And if you go on the OG Nice website, you won't find him in their kind of hierarchical structure. So I think he's an, you know, he's very much an EOS, but he's he's very much looking at, uh, yeah, maximising and 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 gaining competitive advantage in different sports, uh, including football with with Nice. Now, once that audit was done, changes happened, and it led to Bob Ratcliffe, who of course is Jim Ratcliffe's brother, him getting removed. Julian Fournier was also removed as a sporting director. He instigated quite a few changes at Nice, and then going into the summer of 2022, this was a bit of a problem because they didn't have the right people in place. So Brailsford ended up getting involved in their summer transfer window. And last summer, you saw that Nice, they signed, was it Kasper Schmeichel, Aaron Ramsey? They went big on experienced players. It didn't work. Nice, their team was poor. The summer transfer window was poor and the fans were up in arms about it because Brailsford hadn't been able to implement the replacements for the people that he got rid of at Nice, who weren't doing their job properly anyway, it left Nice in a really bad position and they struggled. However, Nice now, in the current position, are the strongest that they have looked in a while. And it seems like the audit of Brailsford certainly worked. The two major changes that happened was Florent Gasolfi was brought in as the new sporting director and Francesco Farioli was brought in as the manager. Now, he worked with the Zerbi. And I tell you what, Nice are flying right now. There's, I think they're second in league. Uh, but it's not just the performances on the pitch, it's off the pitch. Structurally, Nice is the strongest it has been since Ineos took over. So the changes that Brailsford instigated are certainly working. And Nice now is in a much better position. However, it would be lying to say that mistakes haven't been made at Nice. They've made a lot of mistakes, Ineos have, since they took over. And that, of course, will concern United fans. But what would his role be at United? Now, of course, we don't know this for sure, but I think it's fair to assume that he would perform a similar sort of audit at United, looking at the roles of John Murto, Richard Arnold, Andy O'Boyle, anybody in a position of power on the footballing side and decide whether they're good or bad. Spoiler alert, save yourself the, you know, save yourself the audit, mate, the crap, get rid of them all. But uh, getting rid of people too early at Nice was a bit of a problem. And that is something that they will have learned from and they won't do that mistake at United. And then I think Brailsford is probably going to be more of the day-to-day -day presence at United compared to Ratcliffe. Uh, if you look at reports coming out from France, the suggestion is that he's stepping back from his role with Nice. He's kind of stepping back a little bit from his role with Ineos. And United is so big that that has to happen. And that will probably be my concern. If you're looking at concerns overall with, uh, with Brailsford, number one, I think the main concern people are going to have is, well, this is this is Ratcliffe's mate rather than being somebody who we need the best in class. Now, he has proven himself earlier in his career with everything he did with Team GB and everything he did with Team Sky for sure. But it hasn't really been that good with Grenadiers. He's kind of managed to navigate through the whole sort of Team Doctors. If you haven't done about the Team Doctor scandals with Sky, go and have a look at that. There's lots on that. He's kind of survived through all of that. Nice. How good has it happened? Well, he's only been at Nice since spring 2022. So there's not too much you can associate with him there. But I think it's the fact that people are going to look at him as sort of, wow, that's just like this convenient appointment that Jim Ratcliffe knows rather than being the best appointment that we could make in that position. But I've pretty much explained everything that we kind of know to date about who Dave Brailsford is, about everything that he's done so far in his career and about why Jim Ratcliffe trusts him and why he would have quite a central role at Manchester United. I would have definitely have concerns about it. No two ways about it. I would definitely have concerns if Brailsford comes in, and by the looks of it, he absolutely will. But what concerns would you have? What else would you want to know about Brailsford that you don't currently know? You can let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to be doing more of these videos. I might do one on um, different people linked with Manchester United in positions of power. I've done plenty of these before. If there's any more that you want me to do, let me know in the comments. And as I said, if you can drop a like in this video, it makes a big, big difference. And I hope you like the new studio. I didn't mention it until now. Big up the new studio.